the back alley behind the world famous Governor's Comedy Club in Levittown. Listen to Put Up, Shut Up, or Stand Up with your host, Don Sill. Yeah! How is everybody doing today? I'm Don Sill, and welcome to Put Up, Shut Up, or Stand Up, where each week we find two comedians and put them head to head in a variety of comedy challenges to see which one has what it takes and which one has what it ain't. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, we <judge> that. <laughs> so to help us here tonight, we have a panel of three industry veterans who have, will help us judge this comedy face-off. Our first judge is the El Presidente of Knock 'em Dead Comedy. They have a show here every Monday through Friday That's from right. 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. What's good in the hood? Tony Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Don. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Our next judge is comedian extraordinaire who performs regularly all around Long Island. He's a stay-at-home dad and happy as hell to be out of the house right now. Darren <laughs> Dillon is here. Thank, Thank you. you. How Thank you doing? You. Extraordinaire. I like that. Yeah, Thank see you. That? Give it. Um, our third judge is comedian and musician who has been on the scene for a long time and rides the steel pony and rock stages wherever he can. He's Long Island's own Keith Fitz. Welcome, Keith. Yo, what's up? I'm getting a delay on these things. I'm going to put this down. I thought I was yeah, the only one. Yeah. One, 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 hey, one. We don't need them. <laughs> we're, we're good to go just here. Um, so let's give a hand also to our mama joke expert, which is also Keith Fitz today. He's coming in uh, to replace Will Sharon, because Sharon was not Karen, <laughs> and, and uh, was a little uh, over the weather today with bronchitis. We hope he feels better. He's the Yo Mama guy, but we have a Yo Mama expert in Key Fitz who's ready to take it on the challenge. So thank you, Key, for thank stepping you. up to the plate and making it happen for us today because the show must go on. No problem. Now let's meet the contestants. From South Hempstead, Long Island, and a degree from Malloy College, he's an RN and an EMT, so he could save your life twice in one day if he has to. <laughs> it's Josh Schaefer, everybody. If the price is right, of course. <laughs> And for Parts Unknown, she's a comedian who knows how to work it and co-host on Three's Company Radio Show, and she's right here on Gov's Radio with us tonight. It's Mandy Jones, everybody. Mandy Jones. These are our two contestants. Mandy. So, Mandy, we'll start with you. So tell us, Mandy, where are you from? Tell us a little about yourself. I grew up in Santa Riches, which is a little town in uh, eastern Suffolk, Can you screw Long the Island. mic, please, on the mic? There you go. I know. He doesn't. He keeps wanting to swing this way. <laughs> oh, God. Just want to make sure that, that all of our <laughs> listeners could hear you. But you're Cinema Riches? Yes, yeah, Cinema Riches. Um, like I said, that's Eastern Suffolk, Long Island. Yeah, I know, I know Suffolk pretty well. And then I went to Stony Brook University. Um, and now I live over in uh, East Northport, so I haven't made it very far. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. I was uh, Stony Brook University also. I used to have a show on WUSB. I don't know if you did radio uh, yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good, very good. So, um, also, so now, how long have you been doing comedy? Um, it was actually my two-year anniversary the day before, um, I was going to say Easter, uh, Halloween. <laughs> oh, wow, very good. So it just very came good. up on two years uh, the other day. So, when did you first realize that this is what you want to do and this is the career path that you wanted to take? Um, well, you know, I've always loved stand-up comedy. I've always been someone who's just loves stand-up comedy, and I, re you know, repeat jokes it, when appropriate in conversation because I just, you know, I've I've always loved it. But um, I never really thought of telling my own original jokes until I saw um, Pete Holmes crashing the show where oh, he's yeah. talking about uh, he's, you know, he's coming. That's what Artie, right? Be, uh, yeah, 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 yeah exactly. He's coming to be a um, a comedian and the first little tidbits of him making a career for himself and I was like yeah maybe I could try this so I wrote jokes for like three months and I got on stage and um, I've just been trying to make people laugh ever since I hit a lot of open mics and do some shows from time to time so it's a lot of fun I mean I love it excellent well, well we're glad to have you right. and uh, mm -hmm. congratulations with, with uh, being a part of stand-up and reaching a two-year milestone <laughs> um, but now let's let's talk to Josh. So, Josh, uh, how long have you been uh, doing stand up these days? Uh, going like a year and a half. Cool. I've been a writer for years though. Um, independent film, sketch comedy, and like you know visual jokes. I'm, a, I'm I have okay artistic skills, so I can put something together on Photoshop and put it together like that and send it out there. So that kind of like parody stuff and that kind of humor. So I was doing that for a while, and then I met some friends, and I was introduced to Chris Roach, and he said, "Why don't you try it?" And I was like. I don't know, and I got up there and I 
liked it. At times, I at times you know sometimes you're like I hate this, but most times it's like that 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 you know that thrill you get from getting up there and just giving your all and whether you fail or succeed, it's just just an amazing feeling. And I, I like making people laugh. Excellent, man. And and is there a difference between when you you know writing comedy and, and delivering it through like Photoshop or sketch versus being up there by yourself? And and tell me what's that's like. I mean, doing like Photoshop and stuff. It's like it's like your own creation. So there's no there's no one judging you. You don't have an audience until right you there. like you send it out. Then like, what the hell are you thinking? You're like, oh. but in terms of stand up, it's like it's more of like it's it's give and take. It's interactive. You're you know it's, you're getting that 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 vibe from, from instant the feedback. Audience. You don't get that when you're doing like uh, writing or cartooning or things like that. But that the writing and cartooning gives you more independence. Usually goes over better because it's like, wow, I wasn't expecting this. This is pretty cool. As opposed to when you have to like hatch a joke and fine tune it and stuff. You want, I'm sure you, I know you understand. And so it's two different worlds, but they kind of like feed each other. It's like both sides of the brain. And, and for both of you, like start now in the last two years or so, with the, the the tone of the world with this PC culture and all these things, and we we see that uh, you could say one thing, and it, it could uh, destroy your career. You, uh, is it different coming up in that scene? Um, you know, doing stand up with this kind of culture versus like the culture that uh, maybe when you guys were starting a little more freedom, you it's, could, you, yeah, it's definitely different. I don't know, I'm I don't know how you guys do it because when you're starting out, you're, you're so vulnerable, you want to succeed, you want to do everything that you possibly can to be successful, and that's a whole monster in itself. And now you have to deal with this cancel culture over here that's telling you what you can and can't say, basically repressing your creativity. So, I I don't know how you do it. My advice is fuck everyone. <laughs> Someone tells you what to do, tell them, all right, I appreciate it, but go fuck yourself. Because no one can tell you how to pursue your artistic freedom. And the only way we're going to break down those walls of racism or hate or by genderism, whatever the hell it is, is by pointing it out and making fun of it. You have mm -hmm. to confront it and talk about right. it. And to talk about it, sometimes you have to confront it head on so you have to tackle that, that subject in a way uh that that you know the pc police might not always right. approve you gotta of. challenge it yeah, yeah right. it's scary but when you're scared if if you have a bit and like oh, i don't know how this is gonna go over fucking do that bit because <laughs> that's the one that's gonna be separating you from everyone else does that mentality come in when you guys are writing your jokes do you think oh i can't do that because i'll get uh, that won't work or i mean when, when you're early in the game you want to make sure you want to you want to try and land people that are going to help you get more lucrative gigs and you want to be able to please everybody at the same time you have to stay true to yourself because it's just you you can't do anybody else's act now i mean i pretty strongly lean to the left but in terms of the comedy atmosphere it's like you know you're in a comedy club you know there's going to be some really offensive stuff going on so i mean when i hear like a joke that might make me cringe i'm not going to tell this person they can't tell that joke it's like i might say whoa that was going a bit far but i'm not going to tell them you can't tell it that's part of their act so i'm not going to silence it and what's interesting in some of my jokes i kind of poke fun at like really religious people and stuff and stuff that actually i have i have friends on the right who have been upset by my jokes and i'm like wait a minute you're telling me to be more open-minded right right you know i tell a jesus joke and you know the, oh the, that's the, yeah the, that's the floor opens up you know, so. <laughs> um yeah i, I mean i like it's, it's it's a tightrope for sure, and you, you you have to be careful. But but I kind of go with what Darren's saying. You got to just say, go for it. You got to just do mm -hmm. it. How about you, Minnie? When you're writing jokes, is that a conscious decision? Um, there's there's very few things that I don't like to talk about on stage. Um, I don't talk politics on stage, but that's because I'm really not somebody who's political outside of um, you know comedy. So that's something I don't really. Um, I don't do it, but not really, un not intentionally, um, but I'm pretty open about what I talk about. You know, I've talked about, you know, growing up as an American kid and, you know, smoking pot and hating the police. And, you know, I, I, I'm pretty um, controversial with some of the stuff I say. And I, I, I have a very poor um, mouth. Uh, so the F-bomb is constant in my, uh, in my set. So it, it's, just, it's just who I am. I can't, I can't change for the act. And you shouldn't. <laughs> you shouldn't. Be who you are. It's just a word. I agree. I agree. Right, twat face? <laughs> that's, that's right, cum smoker. <laughs> <laughs> My mother used to call me that. That's so funny. <laughs> um, I do want to talk to the judges. Before we begin round one, which is the joke writing challenge, I, I always like to ask this of the judges. And always, I mean the last show in this show. And that is, um, just by looking at... <laughs> by looking at these two right now, 
Uh, what are your thoughts? So I would definitely fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> definitely would fuck him. And I'd let Mandy watch. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, I know Mandy a little yeah, bit. I've never my opening, but there's <laughs> I know Mandy a little bit. I, I've never seen her perform, but I know her as uh, a radio performer. Mm-hmm. And as a person, and you know, as a friend, we've interacted. So, and I'm looking forward to it. You know, I've never met Josh before either, but I, I think you guys are both going to do great. Mm-hmm. Oh. Thanks. Excellent. No How pressure. about you, Tony? Tom? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I love them both. Mandy <laughs> has a show here, and it's a great show. Uh, Josh is a friend of our show. He's been on many times. So um, I guess whoever wants to uh, do me first will win in my book. So. Uh, Sally? Sally? Oh, Sally's here. <laughs> <laughs> Key, Key Fitz, ladies and gentlemen. He's uh, my right-hand man over my shoulder. Over his right hand, that's right. <laughs> He's been reaching think? back a few times to back here for this during the show. Yeah, so I don't know either of these two fucks, so I have no clue. <laughs> so whoever gets me to laugh the, ma- the ba- biggest will be uh, the winner in my book. <laughs> well, we are doing the joke writing challenge. It's round one, everybody. So uh, this is the joke writing challenge. Are you guys ready for this? Yeah, sure. Did you guys find it uh, uh, difficult, or, or what was? How, how did you feel about it? Well, I've never tried to challenge myself with something like this before, so it's definitely uh, definitely tough. I, I literally went to the dictionary with each word, and I'm like, let me go to the actual definitions of each of these <laughs> words to try to get my brain, you know, brain going. Well, every comedian should write their own material, and this round will test their joke writing skills like no other. Both comedians were tasked to write an original joke with a comedy premise and four keywords that they received 24 hours prior to tonight's show. Um, judges will give their score based on originality, creativity, style, resourcefulness, and of course, what's funny. Uh, the premise that we sent you was my crazy neighbor, my crazy neighbor, and the keywords randomly chosen from my Words of Friends game is tracks, worth, nah, and pent. Tracks, <laughs> worth, nah, and pent. N- what was that? What? Nah? <laughs> nah. And it's, it's actually a word. Is uh, that nah, really like actually nah, a word? Nah, yeah, like nah. Like, like you want well, vegetables? You nah. you, the dictionary word version, what did wow. it say? <laughs> well, actually, it, yeah, it said abbreviation for, and then it brought me to a, a Jewish <laughs> word. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going for. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to go with the negative slang word. Okay, very good. That, now, that works. That's what, how I took it. Um, so we will start, ladies first, Mandy Jones with the joke writing challenge. Okay, so I have this crazy neighbor, um, and he's always bragging to me about the penthouse that he used to live in, um, how it was worth like $5 million. And it's like, dude, you live in your mom's basement in Deer Park now, so I don't really get that. (laughs) Um, But he's always like talking about how he had like the dopest tracks, and um, everyone would call him Nah, because like he tried to get the crowd all hyped, and you know, usually everyone says yeah, but everyone just goes Nah. (laughs) <laughs> Excellent. That's all Very I got. Good. Love it. That was good. Nice. So before we go to you, Josh, we're going to go to the judges and, and get their score. Um, well, you, well, you're getting all serious. Man. Yeah. Taking notes. Taking yeah. notes. Yeah. 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 Good, good. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. organized. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's a note to my wife saying, get my you drink. <laughs> <laughs> my scotch. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> we do have a live audience today. Please. We have uh, we have Nancy Rizzuti is, Nancy! is in the studio, and we have Darren's wife. What's her name? Uh, what is your name? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> the lovely and beautiful Jessica Bose Dillon. Yay! Yay! So thank you, ladies, for being uh, being here for our live audience today. Um, all right, so judges, are you ready to score um, Mandy's? For, uh, joke writing challenge. One to ten, right? One through ten. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll start with Tony. One through ten, right? No yeah, point no two. No point. No, no, no <laughs> point five. <laughs> okay. It's a simple yeah. round number, so I could do the math. I don't even have a pen <laughs> with me right now, so Here I'll get you, you a pen. Uh, we'll need a scorekeeper at some point. Oh, okay, good. Done. Oh, thank you. So we will uh, keep the scores as we go. Um, so we'll start with you, Tony. What do you think about Mandy's joke? I liked uh, how Mandy, she wasn't sure about, you know, which version of the word nah you were (laughs) looking for, but she kind of made it both work either way. I liked there was a whole big setup involved, and there was, everything was was good. Uh... Uh, I uh, and I'm I'm generous, so I'm giving uh, oh, Mandy a ten on that. Oh, yeah. a ten. Big fat ten mm-hmm. right there. Thanks. Excellent, excellent. All right, Darren, what do you say, buddy? The thing I like the most about Mandy's joke is the believability, and she owned it. As far as I believe, she had a neighbor mm-hmm. she had this conversation with, 
which to me, that's the most important part of selling material. <laughs> Coming across as natural, not fabricated, not I got a wacky premise. I really believe that you've had this conversation with him, which I really thought was great. Uh, the joke, I mean, joke writing is tough, especially when you just get a word. Like, use this word, yeah. it's really tough. Did a good job. I don't know if I could have done as good a job. Um, overall, I'm going to say laugh-wise, along with the premise, I'm giving you a six. All right. But I really, really liked how you were connected to it. And I feel that if you kept going with that, that could really turn into something. So show don't just throw it away after the show. I'm serious. Show the six to the camera. Just so oh, I'm sorry. So I know you <laughs> six. Legitimately so six. Very good. Very good. That's a good score. Thanks. That's good. Key, what do you say, buddy? Well, I like the fact that you actually went to the dictionary to look for it. <laughs> I like the fact that you did use all the words that you were supposed to and, and get involved with the fact that, like Darren was mentioning, how you didn't have the right nah or one way or the other, <laughs> so you used them both. And uh, I used to do uh, I used to do a competition like this musically, so I liked your I liked the way you uh, executed it. So I gave you an eight. The only problem is my pen don't write, so you oh can't right. see it on my thing. Thank you. There you go. There you go. Uh, teamwork. So folks at home can see. <laughs> hey, <laughs> King <laughs> means business. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Um, I think that was a great joke. Also, I'm not giving a score because I don't have to. I could like you both equally because I, I'm not biased like that, like these guys. No, no um, I I, uh, I thought the joke was great, um, and I, I liked how you did use the word nah as his name, and the people were just like nah. <laughs> that was clever. Yeah, That's I thought good. that was yeah. good. So that was good. So kudos on the joke writing challenge, Josh. How you feeling? You feeling a little nervous now, or yes, you feeling very. more confident? No, I, very very nervous, but I like it. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, so here we go with Josh Schaefer's joke writing challenge, ladies and gentlemen. With the crazy neighbor. Crazy neighbor. Am I close enough? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so my crazy neighbor has a teenager who's feeling all pent up, so he took a walk on the wrong side of the tracks. My crazy neighbor put his foot down and put the kid in Catholic school, only to take him out a week later. Wasn't it worth it, I asked? Nah, he said. I don't like the way the priests are rubbing off on him. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, Josh Schaefer with his joke writing challenge. We'll start this round off with the, with you, Darren. Uh, t tell us uh, your thoughts on uh, what you think. It's a well-crafted so joke. Yeah, that's I good. like where you went with it. Um, you know, people can say, "Well, it's so easy to just go that route with the Catholic Church, and everyone's done it before." But you did it back door. Pardon the pun. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't expect it to go there. Like, I, I was not expecting that. So in that regard, I re it was a great job. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed it. And I would have to give you a, I'll give you a seven for it. Oh, seven. Nice. Good job. <laughs> really good job. Surprise me. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Key? Well, I like the surprise ending. That actually made me laugh even <laughs> harder. So <laughs> that fact alone, I'm going with a nine. Wow. A nine from the Fitzmeister. Very good. Good job. And Tony Walker. I, um, I, I agree with uh, what Darren and Key said. I think uh, there was a nice surprise there. Didn't know where it was going. Uh, delivered well. Uh, I'm going with a nine myself. Nine. Very good. Very good. Nice. Excellent. Good, good job. Good job, everybody, on that. Both of you guys did a great job with the joke brand Were there any um, hiccups along the way when you got it? Uh, like, I know you, you had about a day to come up with those. Uh, did, was it a fast process, or was it more like just to walk me through a little bit of, of the, the challenges of this piece? Um, well, I usually, I don't really, a lot of people say you got to embellish more. Like, I'm not someone who really makes a lot of stuff up. Like, a lot of my jokes are just funny interactions that I take out of real life and then bring them to stage. So actually, like, trying to fabricate something is... Not my, my usual style, so definitely a little tough. <laughs> well, I think you did a really good job. You pulled it out. And uh, how about you, Josh? What are you thinking? I really liked her joke because it was so conversational. It was, like, smooth, you know? The way it was so casual, the way she told it. She has a very funny storytelling style. Uh, what I did was I basically just kind of used some a previous joke that I had jiggling around in my brain. I was like, maybe I could add this here with these words and, like, connect the dots. And I, that's how I came up with it. Because I've had that joke, you know, for a while. I was like, well, why not add it to these... You know, you like I created a story, so and good good use of the words, and those all are all randomly selected. So that that was a good job. So kudos to you guys both on round one. Round very one, good, very complete. good, excellent, everyone. So now, judges, how important w when writing comedy is the premise? Would you say, and finding a good premise, and and where do good premises come from, and what's how to avoid getting into a hack 
style premise, like airplane food or something along those lines. And and uh, <laughs> and like so, just tell me a little bit about uh, the premise in joke writing. It's a great question because um, it is easy to fall into the hack part of, of that. And the premise is important because that's what's setting up the joke. So where do you pull that from? I think your example is great, pulling it just from everyday life, not just making stuff up. Not that there's anything wrong with making stuff up. It's, that's a skill in itself that I couldn't do. You know, I'm much like you. I just conversational. I pull shit out of my daily life and just present it in a way that I think might be funny to everyone. So it's difficult because you don't want to fall in. It could be easy to fall into that hack part because people laugh. Right, yeah, It's exactly. easy to get that laugh. So the premise is... I don't want to say it's as important as the punchline because the punchline is why you're there. That's why you're getting paid. But the premise is important because you want something that's going to be interesting, sometimes topical, and personal to you, which is real important. Right. That's my opinion. I, I agree. And uh, hey. <laughs> this is Mike Dillon. This is Mike Dillon. Uh, <laughs> and, um, so we got we, – there's the, a show going on in the Little Room tonight, which I believe you're performing at, yes. right? Yes. Yes. So headlining. Headlining. Oh, so, the, so there's comedians – all in, over the place and, and uh, in the studio's glass wall. So if you see us looking around, waving to people, or um, it's just our, uh, just our fans. comedian friends <laughs> <laughs> and our fan base just coming out here um, and uh, saying hi. So, t so Tony, w with the premise thing, what's your take on have, finding a good premise? Um, is it something that you think about or are you more like in the line of like going with your normal life and then the premise just comes natural? Well, uh, uh, no, that, that I agree with what Darren said. It's all, it's, you can easily end up in the hack territory. Um, and for the kind of comedy that I write, being that I'm not stand-up, I have a comedy troupe that I work with. It's a little different for us because we're not, we're not just doing set-up punchline. You know, we, we have a whole scripted show and it's, you know, there's a whole plot involved. But I identify with this, the, the line of thinking because it all, it's all comedy in the end, at the end. So and I, it, it's hard because you, it's very hard to stay out of the hack world because you, you like you said you think you get a laugh you think you can just kind of go with it and you end up staying there you're not improving it's it's tough um i don't know so much about premise but i think that's why i gave mandy a 10 over josh giving josh a nine because the whole setup like darren said it felt real it felt real and it felt like you were just talking to your buddy and you get hit with, you know a couple of jokes i know writing our shows it's you, we do we fall into that you know let me write a couple of lines for these people to set up the one laugh right, joke, right. which it and it did. It took me years to kind of get through that, um, and we definitely had shows that were hackish in the beginning. Of, I don't know if that's a word, but I just made it up. Um, I like it. And I we it. Um, <laughs> and it took us years to get to where I think we are, which is at a pretty good level. Um, so yeah, it's the whole thing is hard, it, and it you have to be able to. And we we've talked about it. We I think we even talked about it last week. You have to be able to take the critique and the criticism and even maybe even a, a bombing once in a while because otherwise you're going to think you're good. And that's how you evolve and keep exactly. growing. You, you right. have to have right. those little The things. only way to grow is to bomb. <clears throat> yep. It's very good. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Exactly. And uh, Key, how about you when it comes to writing premises? Well, when it comes to writing premises, I believe also in taking it from real life because that's what keeps it true to life. It keeps it you keeps your unique perspective on it. So you won't fall into the hack necessarily if you're considering your own unique premise on it yeah again it is very easy to fall into the hack everybody likes to because again you're getting that instant gratification of the, the of the laugh but if you look at it in a different view or just look at it from a different angle you can introduce something completely different that nobody else has, has ever said about the something very similar to what everybody else discusses so premise is a very big deal for me premise is a big deal and that's what leads us to round two premise pressure this is premise pressure, but we're going to plug this again. Uh, premise pressure is, uh, so comedy could certainly throw a lot of curveballs, and sometimes you have to think quick on your feet, on your feet. So round two is premise pressure. Now we will see how fast these comedians are with a variety of comedy premises. Each comedian will have two minutes to fire off punchlines with premises given to them from our judges. So this is a two minute round. Our judges all have a list of different premises. <laughs> Good luck. They will shoot a premise at you guys, and um, you have to fire back with a joke 
uh, as fast as you can. So I will set the timer up. We're going to go with Josh first. We'll do a full round of two minutes with uh, Josh with the premise pressure. We'll start with Tony, then we'll go uh, Dylan, uh, Darren, yeah. and then then to uh, Key Fitz. So I'll get ready to start the timer on my, uh, my phone here. So as soon as they deliver, I have to come up with. I have two minutes to come up with a. Well, they're going to. So you come up with one right away, then they're going to throw a second premise and a third. So as many premises as you can get and nail some punchlines, the better. Okay. All right. Um, hold on. What do I do? All right. Is everybody ready for some premise pressure action? This is round two. Premise pressure. We'll start with Josh Schaefer. And three, two, one. And we're going. Being addicted to porn. What's wrong with it? It's wonderful. <laughs> I'm all in favor of it. I mean, if masturbation, if you, you know, like they say, if you can't, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> if you got to take care of, if you want to take care of something right, you got to do it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Darren. Uh, th this is for Josh. Yes. Um, Self-partnered. Well, that's the story of my life. I mean, <laughs> we're going back to square one here, you know. I mean, I did it so much when I was a kid with my right hand. My left hand got jealous and sued me for uh, neglect. <laughs> <laughs> Key. Hoarders. Hoarders? Uh, do hoarders hide whores? Because I was thinking of a friend of mine down the street who's been, like, hoarding whores. So I think that might be a bit of an whores. issue. He's a pimp. Tony, <laughs> back uh, to you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Dog poop. I love it. <laughs> 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 Can't get enough of it. It's organic. It's flavorful. It's, it's meaty. Organic and meaty. All right. Musical go. chairs. Right now. Sure. <laughs> uh, which one is the A flat? Which is the B flat? I mean, what? How, how does that work actually? Does it play a note? You sit on it because I mean, I could fart in alphabetical order. <laughs> <laughs> Best friend's wife. There's too many to name. <laughs> I've been that route, down that route many times, so I mean, <laughs> that's a, that's a, a tight brutal right there. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, Joey Buttafuoco, fucking love that motherfucker. <laughs> He's the best motherfucker that ever lived. You know, as a Jew, you know, we get ten percent taken off. He got thirty. He should be happy for a cheap guinea. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we got room for one more. Less than twelve items line. Coke, 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 Coke. You said lines, so. Okay, okay. <laughs> very good. And time. <laughs> All right, very good job. That's not easy nice to do. Job. That's yeah. premise pressure. Josh Schaefer. We'll let the judges deliberate for a second. So, so Josh, now that you, you've gone through that, uh, how do you feel? Wonderful. <laughs> That's yeah. something you can't really prepare for. No, not at all. So, <laughs> I mean, part of the fun of it is, like, a couple times I got flustered. It's completely, you know... So it, I think it's and sometimes it's more fun to just like you know get flummoxed and be like I have no idea what I'm doing, which kind of like <laughs> takes the pressure off. But I mean, I just kind of just went with it, whatever. Just free thoughts. That's it. it. You just gotta, just gotta it. roll with it and have some fun with it. I think yeah. I think you did very well. I think you had some actual uh, real funny stuff in, in that. So sometimes it's good to just uh, kind of let it all out as it comes at you and uh, and rock it. So um, Key, we'll start with you. What do you think? Well. You were very wordy on that first one, so it took me a little <laughs> while to catch where you were going with it. Mm -hmm. However, I give you a seven. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very nice. nice. And uh, Tony, I uh, I love the way you. Uh, it's not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing to do at all, and um, it, you know it's definitely a lot of pressure. And I feel for you guys if, as you have to do this. Um, I thought the dog poop. <laughs> he loves it. If you just left it as I love it, I think that I think that alone was just hilarious as it was. Um, so uh, you're getting an eight out of me. Eight. I yeah. I thought that was great. Excellent. And Darren. Um, again, yeah, you did a good job. That's not easy to do. Um, premises or or they're the beginning of the joke, and you came up with the slam part, the, which I think is the hardest part of it. And you did good. You stayed with it. It's not easy to just have people yell shit at you and come mm -hmm. up with quick punchlines. So I loved it. I really enjoyed everything you said. I gave you an eight. An eight. Very good. Very good. Josh Schaefer, everybody. All right. So, mm -hmm. Mandy, how are you feeling right now? Oh, I'm super nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think. Don't think. Just going instinct. Jeez. I, 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 um, this is going to test your, your quick reflexes. Right. I think you're going to be fine. Um, we're going to start the clock. you got two minutes. Okay. 
And uh, we'll start with, with Darren, we'll, we'll shoot it off, and then we'll go from Darren to Key to Tony, and then just keep rotating, and uh, just knock it out. Are you ready? Yeah. Set, <laughs> and it's time for some premise pressure. Go! Snake Charmer. Snake Charmer. Oh, you know, I, wasn't there a class for that that I took in college, I think? <laughs> I flung. <laughs> oh, no, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> TLC Network. I don't really watch that network. Um, is that the uh, what is that? A mu- that's not music television. What? Who are those girls <laughs> that I should know? Salt and Pepper. <laughs> uh, lesbians. Ah, uh, what? Uh, what about them? <laughs> I I know quite I love a few. <laughs> I love them. But most of them are just like full blown transgender now. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not as half as fun. <laughs> Mattress shopping. Oh, I haven't done that recently. Um, but you know, what's with like the? You got to figure out like the bounce and like the spring. Like, you got how do you test that out? Like, do you go and go down there with your husband or wife and just like <laughs> <laughs> give it a throw on a Sunday afternoon? Nicely give it a throw. <laughs> Social media. Oh, I'm the worst. Um, like, everyone's just, like, posting pictures of their heads. Like, there's not even, like, a background. Like, there's no frame of reference. It's like, oh, there's Tim and his head again. Like, I don't, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Selfie culture. <laughs> I like that. Tony, you're up. Mother-in-law. Um, oh, I'm actually blessed. I've got a really good one of those, so I don't really got much material on her. She's, <laughs> I mean, I, I she brought her son into this world but that's about it that's all i got on her <laughs> morgan freeman oh um <laughs> <laughs> like he's a puppy i don't have anything mean to say about him i don't think uh, i got nothing <laughs> and key this will be the last one dr pimple popper Oh, she's awesome, man. I, I, that's, that stuff jazzes me up, man. I really, uh, <laughs> jazzes me it's up. Gross. <laughs> you know, <laughs> not me. My, uh, uh, my fiance Wendy loves Dr. Pimple Popper. She could watch pimples being popped all day long. And just, really? <laughs> it's kind of disgusting to me. Yeah, disgusting. Yeah. It's disgusting to me, but she loves it. She uh. watches uh, a show where these kids get these, uh, like, kids in Africa or something that have, like, uh. arms in their feet. <laughs> And they scrape off. <laughs> Thanks. He was throwing it yeah. my way. Thanks, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it. And she loves it. That's what she watches. Uh, oh, that's yeah, disgusting. Yeah. I'd rather fuck Morgan <laughs> Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just, I can't. But oh, yeah, wow. so Dr. Pimple Popper gets a shout out. Wendy, I know you're watching. <laughs> Worms in their you. feet? What the? Yeah, yeah. What? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you living? <laughs> No, it's, it's a video. Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's actually oh, my crazy up. neighbor, you know. I think you need to take her out more. Yeah. That's what I think <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah, and they got like little worms living in their feet. It's it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty horrible. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll start the judging. Okay. I believe we, we're back to Tony. Tony, um, what do you think about um, Mandy's pressure uh, my premise? Bo- my board is falling apart here. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, I liked it, of course. Again, like I said before, it's not an easy thing to do, just coming out with stuff as we're hitting you with stuff. Um, I, I loved the... Uh, you know, at first I was like, I was going to go a little lower when she really had nothing about her mother-in-law. I mean, I appreciate that you, <laughs> that you get along with her, but, you know, we, we were trying to be funny. But then she, I thought Mandy saved it when she's like, oh, she popped, you know, her son out. But there was yeah, no yeah, enthusiasm right, right. there. Exactly. <laughs> so I thought that was hilarious. So I'm going to give her the same I gave Josh, which is an, an eight. Thank you. Very nice. Very good. Very eight good. is a solid score. All right, Darren. So this was tough because we gave her some really hard topics. They were not easy. Mm-hmm. I mean... Social media and, and Morgan Freeman, they were tough. The mother law <laughs> they were tough. It's not easy to do, but I, I felt you, you held your own. You stood in there. You, you, you didn't just give up. You, even like you said with the mother-in-law, you were struggling. Like, I don't know, but you came. It you saved it, which is good, but, and that's all that matters in the end. So I'm giving you an eight. Nice. Thank nice. You. nice. All right, Key. I liked how natural you were being with it and how you were popping it out pretty quickly, <laughs> even though you had a little bit of struggle once or twice. So I'm sticking with the same score as them, eight. Thanks. Wow, very good. <laughs> Triple eights. Triple eights, everybody. Very impressed so far. So let's talk to our judges one more time about let's these guys. Let's do it. What are you thinking about them so far now? Now that we're in the middle of the game and we're getting to know them a little bit more. I love how conversational and 
easygoing Mandy is, how you mm-hmm. are. Thank when you're, you. like I said, unfortunately, I haven't seen you before. I think we're working with each other soon. But I imagine that's this is how you are on stage. And that's that's such a hurdle to begin with. Like, you seem to have already found your voice. Now that voice may change, but I mean as far as your presence and being comfortable and relaxed, that's half the battle. And you're very conversational and relaxed, and I really, I really like that a lot. It took me a while to get there. You know, like I've said before in the past, you know, you, everyone has this, this mask you put on because you're so vulnerable and you don't want people to know who you are. And if the mask fails, it's the mask. It's not me. But you're, you're doing like so natural and just out there. And I think that's got a, a nice leg up for you. And just keep going with it. Don't mm-hmm. change. Thanks. And Josh, you obviously, I love your joke writing. Mm-hmm. It's very, it's, you can tell you, you're, you're, you've been writing jokes for a while. I can tell. I can see it. The, the craftsman there. And. You're quick too, and unfortunately, I haven't got to see you work with you yet. But um, you got a nice, relaxed notion about you. You know, like you're you're not. I'm not worried. Like sometimes, you know, when you see a comic and you're not too sure who they are, you get like I get nervous. Like, oh god, is he, like, is he gonna be right? Like, I I feel bad. I'm pulling for him. Like, I don't feel like I have to pull for you. You got it. You're there. So I'm enjoying it. You guys are great so far. I agree. And also, like uh, dealing with these premises and stuff like that. Like, like Josh, I know you're an EMT and and also an RN, and so you've seen some things. Mm. Some good, bad, and the ugly. Um, a lot of ugly. How do you, yeah. A lot of in this room. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking around and amongst the. Uh, There's our no patients. prescription for you guys, though. I'm sorry. You, you got to stick or you got to live with it. But what, do you pull from that in your creative? Like, like the, the things you've seen, um, does that help shape you as an artist, do you think? To, to, like, like I, I work briefly in a hospital and in, in the ERs, and I've seen things um, that are, you know, you don't want to. No, always like even talk about so to see those things as the EMT and and uh, as RN does that incorporate that into your comedy at all like it, not directly but it, yeah so. oh absolutely I mean because of HIPAA and stuff I mean of course respect for the patients I can't make jokes directly related to actual incidents but I can say it's based on actual incidents and I mean you can't make the stuff up that, you, <laughs> that I experience at work because I'm just some of the stuff I've seen is outrageous, and it, it just you know it's it's larger than life, and comedy is is you know reality extended, which in essence is also larger than life. So a lot of my material is based on my experiences in the uh, in, in the healthcare profession, and it's fun. it's honestly it's fun because I can make generalizations about patients without like you know I'm not going to say specific things about people, but you know the stuff that I've seen. I mean, it's better. It, you, you wouldn't see it in the movie. It's 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 really really crazy stuff. <laughs> And also, as an RN, your bedside manner must be, like, awesome. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a dick to your patients. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. I use a lot of humor, actually. I do use a lot of humor. Well, it's fun because in the hospital setting, you know, actually, you know, I, I read a study with a lot of healthcare professionals pursue, you know, the arts with their with their off time. So they kind of do both. They have, like, they're juggling two careers. And I'm proud to say I do the same because, you know, when you're in the hospital setting, it's kind of like you're, you're, you know, when you're making people laugh, there's not a lot of providers who do that. So I feel like a big fish in a small pond. Mm-hmm. But then when I go into the actual comedy world, it, it helps fuel me. But at the same time, I respect those who just, this is what they're doing all the time. So it kind of like mixes, I guess you could say, because I bring, I think I bring a unique perspective to my, to my work. But it's, it overall, I think, like I said before, like one side fuels the other. So, I mean, you can't, you have to laugh. I mean, you have to use humor in, in, in healthcare. Without, without a doubt. And a lot of patients appreciate it. They really do. They like it. Yeah, I think so, because n- nothing heals better than morphine. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, Mandy, how about you? What's your day job? Um, I work for a company that sells uh, everything you need to build a gas station. So I work with <laughs> a crew wow. of guys who, like, come out oh. and they make sure that everything is safe um, in that, you know, if a car goes into your diesel dispenser, they make sure that gas isn't just going to go into the air and there's emergency shutoffs and all these things that have to be in place by government standards. So your job, you must meet a bunch of people and, and, and different characters and stuff like that, like gas station owners, I would assume. Uh, yeah, I work with a, a ton of different people. A lot of people, we do a lot of work at airports and stuff. So there's a cast of characters that I get to talk to on a day to day basis. But I'm all, uh, you know, everything's over the phone. So I don't have to physically deal with everybody. It's all just, you know, <laughs> just have to talk to them. So that's a plus. <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, it, just to be able to have the communication skills alone, you must be able to exercise your comedic skill set 
in that environment, right? Yeah, you know, and it's a lot of pressure. Like, people are spending a lot of money, and they're trying to get this stuff right, and you got to laugh at some of the stuff because it, it gets intense sometimes, you know, when a lot of money's getting thrown around on projects. You know, <laughs> yeah. people get stressed, and right, you know, right. but we try to be a team and laugh, so it's Excellent. all good. <laughs> now, we're getting into our next round here, and it's a, I think it's an old art form that we have not seen in quite a while, and it is the Yo Mama jokes. <laughs> Down, uh, you, you look like you've said some Yo Mama jokes. I grew up in Queens. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I know what it's all about. I think it's a, it's a lost art form, and, and we're trying to bring it back, and we have one of the masters of Yo Mama jokes <laughs> sitting right behind us. Yeah, Yo Mama. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Keith Fitz came in here, uh, and he is going to save the day by doing Yo Mama jokes today uh, and uh, challenge our two contestants <laughs> to a Yo Mama joke uh, battle royale. Mm-hmm. And um, so, uh, like, so I just want to, you know, before he's doing all the Yo Mama jokes, but are there any Yo Mama jokes that you guys, uh, well, we'll save it to the end because we don't want to, like, they might have. <laughs> Anything I have is so dated. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's from years ago. Think, yeah. It's not my forte, but I do enjoy a good Yo Mama joke. <laughs> That's not what <laughs> great. Sorry, Dan. Is this a back and forth? Like, he goes, when we go, like, he He's going to go, he's going to take one at a time. So he he's going to go, we're going to go of. Uh, you went first last round, right? Yes. So he's going to go first. You <laughs> okay. Maybe. Sorry. No. It's going to be um, three minutes on the clock. Okay. A uh, three-minute Yo Mama Battle Royale against Key Fitz versus Mandy Jones first. So when performing stand-up comedy, comedians should know how to handle hecklers and be able to roast a person at the drop of a dime. So this round, these comedians will have to face off and trade Yo Mama insults with our Yo Mama expert, Key Fitz. Because <laughs> of the Key Fitz, you must wear it. Uh, for three minutes, <laughs> and each comedian. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have I heard yeah. that? <laughs> uh, and so this will test each comedian's <laughs> skill set in your mama battling, because you never know when a your mama battle is going to erupt, right, Mandy? Yeah. In your with your crazy neighbor, <laughs> you might have to uh, <laughs> hit him up. All right, so we're going to start the clock at three minutes. Let me get my trusty uh, timekeeper thing here. Uh, on your mark, we'll start. Key will kick it off. And then Mandy, and then we'll just go back and okay. forth. And go. Your mama's so fat, her tits are in one time zone and her ass is in the other. <laughs> <laughs> your mom's so fat, she's all six of your bringers. <laughs> <laughs> your mom is so stupid, she thought Hamburger Helper came with a helper. <laughs> your mom's so stupid, she was studying for her drug test. <laughs> yeah, but she still got the high score. Anyway, <laughs> your mom is so ugly. I took her to the zoo and they kept her. <laughs> your mom's so stupid. She thought Lincoln Logs were the president's journal. <laughs> <laughs> your mom is so ugly. I took her to the haunted house. They gave her an application. <laughs> Uh, your mom's so stupid. She got a DWI in an Uber. (laughs) 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 Your your mom is so stupid. She saw she was going to Disneyland. She saw Disneyland to the left, and she decided, "Oh, it left. I'm gone." (laughs) (laughs) Um, Your mom's so stupid. She was looking for her glasses so she could read her audio (laughs) book. Your mom is so stupid, she gl- she climbed over a glass wall just to see what was on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom's so stupid, she was asking how many pieces were going to be in the word puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom is so stupid, she brought a spoon to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Your mom's so stupid, she thought the Tide Pod Challenge was going on because of the full moon. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Your mom is so stupid, she brought a ruler to bed to see see how long she was asleep. (laughs) 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 Your mom's so lame, she couldn't even get Tom as her friend on MySpace. (laughs) (laughs) One minute left, one minute warning. Your mom is so ugly, she gave nightmares to Freddy (laughs) Krueger. Your mom's so stupid, she thought turning the clocks back just meant she had to turn it around on her nightstand. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom is so ugly, when she took the ba- a bath, the bath water jumped out. <laughs> Your mom's so poor, she can't even afford house arrest. She's on apartment arrest. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the last one each for this round. Your mama is so fat, when she walked past the TV, I missed three episodes. 
Um, I don't got any more. <laughs> Just rifle off one. Yeah, off the- um, your mom's so fat. <laughs> 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 um, they don't let her ride the ri- roller coaster, so. <laughs> <laughs> and time! At Six Flags. That was great. Good stuff. Good job. Good stuff. That was great, everybody. Nice Yo Mama battle. Very good. The first Yo Mama battle of our show history, I might add. So we'll start uh, with, with Darren. Well, what do you think so far of the Yo Mama battling? It's tough. <laughs> it is tough because I, I, I don't have any Yo Mama jokes that are present. You know, they're all <laughs> like related to like the 80s because I'm old. But I thought they were great. They were funny. I mean, you came out of the gate just hardcore. Your first one just popped. It was great. I'm, I give you a lot of credit. Good job. I mean, they weren't anything that I've <laughs> ever heard before. I mean, did you write those? You made those I up yourself? I tried to. Like I said to um, Don before, I was like, every time I thought of one, I was like, have I heard that before? Yeah, I yeah, tried yeah, to I, not I, look I, at I any websites same, yeah, or anything. Yeah. I tried to be completely original. No, I, lo- I think they were all original. Same. I've never heard them, so I thought they were great. You did a great job. I'm giving you a 10. Nice. Whoa. Oh, nice. It's yeah. not good. easy to do. Mm-hmm. Very good. Very good score. Uh, Key, what do you think? You you battled her. What do you, what do you say? What's your score for her? I like how natural she was with them and how they came out so quickly and 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 whatnot. Um, I'm going with a nine. Niner, yes, good score, and that's coming from the guy that <laughs> your opponent, uh, Tony. What do you think? <coughs> Excuse me, I um, you know, I yeah, I was surprised at the end because you were doing so well there, um, but uh, I. I just thought the bringer joke alone was yeah, uh, like was like Darren great. said. I never heard any of those. But yeah, that the was bringer great. joke the bringer alone joke. was, you know, you you got a just you got a ten out of me just <laughs> wow, because just yeah, because of that one joke. Wow. That bringer joke was great. Wow. Yeah, yeah was, absolutely. It was a home run. It was yeah, really good. But yeah, like Darren said, I never heard any of those before. So that uh, good job. I was good impressed. Job. That was great Very stuff. Impressed. Impressed. Now, Josh, it's your turn. Now, now, Josh. Have you heard any of the jokes that you had already? Like sometimes there's, there's a similar thinking. There might be one. I think there's one that might. But I mean, I really try to make it on my own. So they'll work or they won't work. But you know, I was I was just proud that I try not, I try not to be I try not to hack. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Have you ever been in a yo mama battle before? No, I like mamas. I like mamas. <laughs> <laughs> I like mamas. <laughs> I like right. making fun of mamas. Are <laughs> you ready to make fun of some mamas now? Yes. All right, so uh, we are going to. Hold on, we got an order going. Oh, that's okay. Oh, let's hear it. Right, uh, <laughs> very good. <laughs> we had a waitress just come in for our uh, studio audience. I think she's and beating that up. Is fine. I think she's beating up Nancy for a bill. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now, now that the waitress has left the building, uh, we are preparing for our Yo Mama battle with with Josh Schaefer versus. Versus Key Fitz, our Yo Mama specialist. <laughs> In an epic <laughs> Yo Mama battle. <laughs> so, you guys ready? <laughs> Here we go. No Here pressure. Here we go. I'm going to get the clock starting up. Oh, I keep hitting the wrong button. Three. Are you ready, Key? I'm ready. Are you ready, Josh? Yes. In three, two, one, and go. Yo Mama is so fat, her tits show up 15 minutes before she does. <laughs> <laughs> Your mama's so smelly, the dog blames her for his farts. <laughs> <laughs> Your mama's so fat, she got turned down at an all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> Your mama's so dumb, she thinks 401k is a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> your mama's so stupid, when, her, when your dad said it was chilly outside, she ran out with a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom is so dopey, she thinks dichotomy is an operation for lesbians. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> your, your mom is so fat, she sat on a rainbow and Skittles came out. <laughs> your mom is so creepy, her vibrator started a Me Too movement. <laughs> your mom is so fat, her, her vibrator turned her down. <laughs> Your mom was so fat, she was on 600 Pound Life, and that dude changed his name from Dr. Now to Dr. Never. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Your mom is so stupid. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) Uh, Your mom is such a compulsive liar, her Native American name is Chief Sitting Bullshit. (laughs) Oh, nice. (laughs) You got more? 
Nope. <laughs> no. My mom is so fat she wears a phone booth for a beeper. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I told you these are eighties shows. Yeah. <laughs> Your mom is so horny she converted to Judaism just so she could blow the shofar. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom is so fat she fell in love and broke it. <laughs> <laughs> Your mama's so big and hairy, she went to the Empire State Building and planes started shooting at her. <laughs> <laughs> Your mama's so fat, when she sits around the house, she sits around the house. <laughs> Your mama's so big, when she goes to the beach, whales watch her. Yeah, okay, sorry. You're still laughing. We got Your mama's so ugly, she can't even get raped. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. <laughs> Your mom is so fat, she doesn't get liposuction, she gets hipposuction. <laughs> oh, snap, crackle. <laughs> Your mom is so fat, she broke the back of a camel. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom is so big, she went to the Macy's Parade, they tried to fill her up with helium. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom is so fat, they couldn't get her up on the freaking lines. <laughs> Your mom is so freaky, she lost a leg in a car accident and said, it's all right, I got two more. <laughs> All right, we got 15 seconds. Does anybody have a final Yo Mama joke? Your mom is so slutty. Her middle name is Prilosec. And <laughs> 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 nothing. And time. And nothing. On the Yo Mama joke challenge, everybody. Woo! I like yours, Darren. Those are some good ones. Those are some good ones. Um, Three minutes was tough to fill on those Yo Mamas babbling, but I think we did a good job all around, I think, everyone. Where so give a hand from? for yourselves, everybody, for coming yeah, up with Yo Mama yeah. jokes. Darren coming in uh, with some... with some uh, Bad 80s Yo Mama jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, kind of teamwork on the judges' side here uh, helped make the dream work. And, uh, and you held your own, Josh, very, very good. <laughs> and you wrote m mostly all of those on your own, right? I think so. I think like the one that the zoo one. I think might have heard that one someplace, and maybe like you know who knows. But I mean, I, I mean, actually, I did like research stuff to make sure. I mean, I just looked it up to make sure I wasn't stealing anything. Right, but it yeah, did motivate no. me because like there was one. There's some hilarious ones. Like your mama's teeth is so yellow. Something about a stop sign or something like that. <laughs> 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 slowed down. I'm like, how do these guys think of these? Yeah, there's some yeah, great ones really out there. Good. But no, that that's that's part of the challenge is trying to come up with with new fresh ones. And and you did great and and. Uh, he did great, and everyone, Darren did great, but everyone uh, kind of stepped up into the challenge there. So now, we'll go to our judges once again and see um, what they thought about the Yo Mama battle. Um, Darren, we'll start with you. Like I said, those are tough, as you can see. I had, I was, I was grasping at straws for you to try to combat you back and forth. It's, it's, it's not easy to do that. It's a skill. I think you handled it really well. You had some good stuff. Um, there was that one I, d I heard the zoo one before I've heard that one, but that's all right. You know, it's parallel writing. What do you do? I think you did a good job. I really enjoyed it. I'm giving you a nine. Oh, thank you. Excellent <laughs> score. Very good. Nine from Darren Dillon. Uh, Key, what do you got? I liked your execution. I liked the originality of, of your pieces. Um, I'm giving you a nine, too. Thank you. Wow, very good score. And uh, Tony, we'll come to you. <coughs> I am. Um, I am not a good judge because I'm just too nice to everybody. But I thought it was uh, a 10. I love Josh's stuff. I think he's hilarious. So I'm, he's getting a 10. Good job. Me. Very good. Good job very by good. both of you. Very it's good job. Tough. Yes, you can definitely see the skills, the writing skills of the Yo Mama. You guys both held your own against one of the uh, Yo Mama champions of uh, our show. And it's because it's the first show ever. Uh, you know. <laughs> but no, you guys uh, all did great. Um, and uh, th that was a very tough round. Um, are, we, are we doing good with everything? No. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Some things don't change, right? <laughs> <laughs> Darren's been here before. He's been through this. You right, can't. Right. You can't. Right. It's technology. It'll be fixed, though. though. And, and we're going to post the show a solid video after, and they'll still be able to see it, and right. it'll be. It uh, happens. It's technology's yep. got bugs all the time. There's no. little goblins. There's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing it. you can do, man. Uh, we we'll all have to deal with, with it. It's live. This is the yeah. th when we go live, you, you run into these kind of problems, and. And it's just all how you roll with it yep. at the end of the day. And the same thing when you guys are on stage doing stand-up. It's how you roll with it. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, Mandy, has this ever happened to you on stage where you just, uh, things started going wrong and you had I to correct yourself? I totally blanked out one time. Totally started to tell jokes that I don't have. I was like, give me liberty or give me... 
death. Like, literally, I said those words, and I somehow regained strength. Did you have a stroke on stage? <laughs> I had a drink. It was, I just, it was when I first started. It was probably, like, four or five months into doing comedy, and I totally just, just like, blank. I didn't, I didn't prepare enough, and, um, yeah, I totally just, and then I ended up regaining strength somehow to, I got my set back, like, uh, a minute and a half after that, which is a very long time. That's an time. amazing feeling, though, <laughs> yeah. too, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's I like actually, you're reaching for that, that safety yeah, line. You finally yeah, get... Yeah, and, just, and then I was on a roll as soon as I, yeah. I caught a joke and I was all right. But, uh, yeah, it was It just takes that one joke, yeah, too, yeah, to exactly. click it. Yeah, exactly. Because if you miss one sometimes, then the three or four behind it aren't coming. So as soon as I was able to get the joke, I was able to... As long as you keep an air of game. confidence up there, because once the audience knows that you... Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They you turn slip on a little. You, yeah, done. they can yeah. easily. <laughs> they smell fear. Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, yeah. Did anybody think it was part of the act? Oh no, no, they knew. <laughs> they knew. <laughs> they knew <laughs> genuine fuck up. <laughs> you could have played it off like part of the <laughs> act. Yeah. My husband was like, "You said that already." Like I started to like. Your husband was heckling you. <laughs> Your husband yelled that. <laughs> that's awesome. That's great. That's, great. that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was a good time. <laughs> and how about you, Josh? When, you, when you're on stage and, and things start to uh, unravel a, a little bit, and or you're not getting the laughs you wanted, or you miss your place, or something goes wrong, how do you recover from it? What's your secret? I mean, I, like I, I said, I think I said earlier that it's like it's fun. It's just like soak up the failure because actually, audiences get a, sometimes get a really good laugh. You just being yourself, acknowledging it instead of just pretending everything is fine and just pushing forward. So, yeah, I mean. You, it usually works out for me the best when I just kind of like, all right. It's just, just kind of riffle. Like one time I went, pa -na -pa -pa -na -pa -na -na. <laughs> I start to walk off. They laugh more at that than they laugh at the jokes. <laughs> it's funny. You know, I like to just keep myself on my toes and just go with it. I mean, it's not, you know, it's comedy. It's not brain surgery. It, it's not being an EMT. <laughs> um, now, now, Darren, you've been doing stand-up for how long about? I'm, I'm embarrassed to say. It's got to be, it's got to be over 20 years. Yeah, so you've been doing this for a while. You've yeah. been on and look where I am. Many stages. You're here. On, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You made I'm it in all the way. Star room yeah. in the back of a fucking car. <laughs> you made on it. Division all the way Avenue. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's probably stealing my tires off my car right now. <laughs> and this is where it's brought me. <laughs> this is where it brought you right here to this moment. This is it. This is. This is I your must time really to suck at this. <laughs> <laughs> this why haven't you left me already? <laughs> 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 Darren's wife is off in the uh, in, in our studio audience and she said that she tried to leave him many times. <laughs> but, but he keeps finding her. It's tough, but you know what? Once you get bit, it's it's so addicting. Yeah. It's so addicting and it's so enjoyable and there's nothing else. There's no other art form like it. You're up there. You're alone. That's it. You don't have a guitar. You don't have a song. You don't have music. It's you and your thoughts and nothing else. And that it could be, it's like when, when things go well, you guys know, it's, it's like... That, hair, that 30 seconds after you get off that stage, you're like, oh, my you God. You feel great. <laughs> but it leaves so fast. They got to do it again. And that's where, like, yeah. okay, where's my next set? Where's yeah. my next fix coming yeah, from, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. It's the most incredible thing in the world. It really is. Do you, when you go to clubs, do you read the crowd and say, all right, this is a crowd. I have to, they're not going to want this material. They want this material. Or you just go up there and sell yourself no matter what. I used to when I was younger. But Peter Bales had once said to me, great advice. He said, because I would get nervous if I saw, like, older people. Like I mean, older, older, and he would say, "Hey, they've seen it all, man. You don't have to worry. They've seen it all. They don't care." And he's right. Yeah, yeah. The crowds that I get upset or nervous about is when I see a lot of baseball hats. When I see younger yeah, people, I'm like, yeah. "Oh, this is gonna <laughs> <Baseball> suck." <laughs> <laughs> they just sit there, like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. make me like prom show. You guys, do they still do prom shows? Have you guys done prom shows? Proms, Those yeah. are that's where you are earning your dues, mm -hmm. making your bones. <laughs> oh my I'm, god, you've done them. Yep, they are the worst. The they kids don't come care. in, they don't care, they're they're drunk or right. whatever it is, <laughs> yep. and no one wants to laugh. You could be the funniest thing in the world, they don't care because, like, I'm not gonna laugh in front of this because it's uncool to laugh. They're trying right, to figure yeah, out yeah, ways of how to they where they can sneak out. Yeah, yeah they, 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 they are the part. worst. Yep. They're the worst, but you can't when you, you just got to go up there and be yourself. You can't judge. Well, this crowd likes this, this crowd like you start doing that, you're fucked. Right, you're yeah. fucked. But like, like for instance, if you're at uh, a prom show and you're dealing with a bunch of kids, mm -hmm. like literally 18, 19 year old yeah. kids, and you got your set that, you know, I, I, I haven't seen you live, but I've seen you on YouTube. And uh, great stuff, by the way. Thanks. But it's a lot of family, I got kids stuff that these kids might not relate to. Right. So, so now do you say, all right, I got to change it up? Or do you say, fuck it, I'm just going to give these kids that. 
they're, um, they're going to get my I would say too. fuck it at this point. When I was doing the prom shows, my act was a little bit different. You know, it was 10 years ago. I was doing different stuff. But right, even right. then, they don't care. How am I going to relate to a 17-year-old kid? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, it's it doesn't matter yeah. what I'm saying. You know, right. I'm, if I'm talking about, you know, whether it's, you know, you can't smoke in a club or, you know, uh, politics, they can't relate to that. Right, all they yeah. want to think, all they want to know is, like, when am I going to get out of here? Because I want to try and get my dick inside of her. <laughs> my prom uh, day. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's what prom's around, right? Yeah, that's right, why yeah. I asked you to go with me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys went. <laughs> we did. Yeah. We had a great time. <laughs> we did. We don't want to talk about that. He uh, <laughs> doesn't put out. <laughs> he didn't that's pay what I heard. That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't do that. And I'm sure you guys know that. You just got to go up there, be true to yourself, do your shit. If they don't like it, look, Dave Chappelle said, at any one time when I'm in a club, there's at least 30% of that room that's not going to like me. That's Dave Chappelle. Right, right, yeah. So if Dave Chappelle's saying that, you got to just be true to yourself and have fun, man. Eventually, they'll come around. Someone will smile. If you're not for them, you're not for them. Fuck them, you know? You can't please everyone. You just can't. True words. That's my Facebook post tomorrow night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> can't please everyone. If not, fuck them. That's <laughs> it. Um, <laughs> key, 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 have you been in this in a scenario... Um, you know, you've been in the game for a long time too. You, you also a musician and comedian. Tell me about your read of the crowd and your procedure when you go up there. Well, I usually stick with what I plan on doing when I'm go when I go up there. And I can tell you one particular instance that came to mind while you guys were all discussing. Um, I was at a gay club in uh, Manhattan, and everybody decided they're going to change up and try to do. I'm gay, this that, and they all fell flat. I killed that night. I went up there, I didn't do a one gay joke because it wasn't in my set that pl I had planned for the night. I went up there, I did my set, and everybody loved me. They were buying me drinks at the end of the night. I don't know if there was to get into my pants or not, but still. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you get late at least? <laughs> <laughs> a couple lap dances in the back of the bar. But oh, there, you go, there you go. Very good. Yes, but that's great. I mean, he was being true. Right. And you know what? An audience respects that because if you pander to an audience, they know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they know what that is. You and know? They could read you. And Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and they could figure it out, and they know. And, and that's why confidence is so important uh, on stage. So, so, like, through the years w with you, and, and then we'll ask you guys, because I, I know you, you have a couple years under your belts, and th these guys have, you know, 20 years uh, or so under their belts. Um, you know, how has your confidence evolved through the years? Like, you know, like when I did stand up briefly in the late 90s, I lasted a year. But all day long on a show day, it's on my mind, like butterflies in my stomach. Up until they introduce me. And then, like you said, when you come off, you either have that euphoria or if you bomb, you have that, what am I doing? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but when does that go away or does it, like, the, your confidence level, like if you know you have a show tonight, like you're going to be headlining tonight. After the first joke that hit, that hits, then you're in your zone. Yeah, otherwise, because it's I'm all, like I've said this before. I've said this to, to all my friends. Like I'm, I still am so insecure and still think, what do you think you're doing? Like I still don't feel like I belong there because it's just I don't know. It's just your head. Like it's just you, we're so fragile as performers because everything I, that you're seeing, it's me. I came from me, so it's it's really tough. It's really tough. But once you get that first laugh. And you're cooking, then you're going, you know. But up until that time, I mean, you know, I think any performer feels that little butterfly. Once you stop feeling that, I think you're done. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I agree. I think that's that's the sign off when you know you're yeah. nailing when it. When you don't care, right? When you don't care anymore. Yeah. And and Tony, with with the live stuff and, and uh, you know, knock 'em dead comedy, what you do, you got there with a comedy troupe. Do you still get the butterflies? Oh, absolutely. And you you, you got like different audiences all the time. It's people, you know. Well, yeah, that's what you had asked before about reading an audience. I always go out there before the show because, like you said, we're we're not just performing in a in a club. We're fundraisers, corporate events, private parties. So I got to go out there and look for the hats. Mm -hmm. Actually, I spent a lot of time looking for the red hats. You know, the old lady, the um, the group, the red hats. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> you got a few tables of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, it can go either way. So yeah, yeah, they either gonna love you or yeah. despise you. And then you know, so I got to judge. Okay, what's out there? Are there a couple of kids here? Are there you know young people? They're our age. And then, uh, uh, do they look like the type that's gonna enjoy some innuendos? Do we got to pull back the innu right, innuendos? Right. And then. And then I got to go back to the cast. Okay, this is what we got. This is what I think we should do. This is so it's 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 different, but it's again it's a, still the same world, just a different type of comedy. But uh, same thing, total butterflies because I I write our shows. We have uh, four or five different murder mysteries that we do. I wrote them, so 
it's you know it's my baby. So right, yeah, I'm not yeah. the first one out there usually in our, most of the time in our shows. But I'm listening and I'm hearing what's you know. So as soon as the same thing, as soon as they start clicking and they're getting comfortable, everybody's together. I'm like the proud daddy, and you know, back there. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I did that. Yeah. That's mine. You know? <laughs> nice. And then, it, but then it also helps me too as a performer because then, because the, the performers out there set the tone. They're in the zone. Everything's great. Now I can come out. I don't have to set that tone. I can just come out and enjoy the fun and join in, and uh, we just have a have a blast. I mean, and we've had you know plenty of bad nights too. When we first started in the beginning, we were, you know, I'm the first to admit we were awful. We had, uh, I think, in our first year we were asked twice to actually stop without even finishing <laughs> oh wow oh, yeah. <laughs> but that was you know that was 20 something years ago you know yeah. here we are now and, and we're you know we're working we're working a lot so uh and we're, we're happy and uh, yeah and, and but still just 20 years later i'm yeah that same feeling like, oh, i can't wait to get out there and, yeah, yeah and for me it's different i'm not like darren saying you know it's my thoughts and my uh, i'm different that way I, I don't necessarily feel the need to share my thoughts but I want to get out there. and I, I just want to entertain and you laugh. You want your characters to, to, to do well? I just want everybody to laugh. You want everybody to have you know, fun? It doesn't necessarily yeah. have to be my thoughts on, I don't know, Trump or whatever it is. I just want to – maybe I'm, I'm just old school more. We can just go out there and put on a scripted show and laugh. I'm just I, – I can't get enough of it. So yeah, I, I get yeah. the butterflies. I get the excitement. I just want to go out there and make them laugh and laugh with them and just have a great night. So it's uh, – yeah, and uh, I'd like to think we're all accomplishing it, all of us here. I mean, and, and that's and that's a beauty of it, too, if you don't mind me rambling here. The getting, since we've been involved here, just getting to know, you know, everybody. I, you know, I didn't know, I, you know, I knew you, but right, I, didn't, right. I didn't know anybody here. I didn't know yeah. anybody here before, until we came in. I knew Joey Cole a little bit. We have a little bit of a personal connection, but barely knew him now. Me and him are like, we're, he's one of my best friends. Yeah, he's a great dude, great comedian. And, yeah, it's, and that's, that's a big part of it, too. Like, I can sit here all night and talk shop with you guys yeah. and enjoy each other's sets i like to get that's and one downside is because we're all working all the time i don't get the support as much as right I to be out there watching like, live um, stand up like bonnie who was who was on last week does a show with, with mandy i don't know how she does it she is constantly at shows supporting somebody <laughs> right right um yeah. and i give her credit for that but uh i i yeah i'd love to do that i just love the community here i love you know, I just love getting to know everybody, making friends, and getting to know everybody, and just having a. That's part of it for me. It's yes, not indeed. just the show. It's not just my set or my jokes. It's the whole community, it's the comedy camaraderie, the, the, the whole the world. Camaraderie. And this club is really they've they've cultivated mm -hmm. that. In, yes, they have. Like an impeccable way. Like yeah, it's absolutely. It's so like it's a family. It really is, yeah. and I feel like, I truly feel like that. Once you're performing, you're in it. You're you're doing sets, whatever. We're on the same tribe, all of us. You know, I don't care if you're doing it for six months or sixty years. Years, it's something that you're connected with, and they cultivate that here, which is fantastic. Absolutely, they do. It's a great, it's a great scene here. I think the Long Island comedy scene is is definitely uh, getting strong again. I think it was it was strong back in the day, and, and now it feels like it's it's really flexing its muscles mm -hmm. again. And, and our comics are rising up, and and uh, you know, showing our stuff. And I think um, you know, there's something in the water here in Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's mercury. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's we're all dying of cancer. <laughs> <laughs> so long, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, speaking of butterflies, you guys are about to do your set very shortly. Um, um, you know, it's, it's still early. We still got some time to talk <laughs> to our contestants to get to know you guys a little bit better. Uh, so, tell me. We're talking about the, having that butterflies and having that euphoric feeling, the before and the after of going on stage. Um, Mandy, walk me through your day. Like like last night, you had a show, right? I did. So, what was the day like for you leading up to that? Um, well, I'm generally in a better mood <laughs> because I know you know I'm always uh, I'm just running on the excitement of the show coming up. Um, you know, on my way to work, on my way home from work, I'm not listening to music. I'm rehearsing my set. I'm trying to run through it, you know, and make it nice so that I don't uh, bomb like I told you about earlier. <laughs> um, that scared me straight, which is good. Um, and then I just have so much energy after the show. I'm just, like, on a natural high. Like, I actually went and got uh, fast food last night. I'm picking up food, and the lady's like, you have so much energy, and you're so happy for this hour. And it's like, <laughs> I'm not even on anything. I'm just literally high on life, you know. It's like 1230, <laughs> and I just had a good set, so I'm pumped, you yeah, know. Yeah, that's awesome. So it's all good. How often do you try to change up your 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 set? Like, are you always working on new bits and new material? Or, or uh, do you just have you, you say, all right, this is my five ten minutes or how long do you normally go uh i'm usually doing like a seven minute spot right. something like that um i'm always trying to do new stuff i'm always trying to do new stuff um 
you go to the mics and you try to find out what works and then if it gets a laugh i'm always just adding on to the set you know i'm right, taking right. stuff out and picking stuff apart and i'm always doing a different set like my if you see me on a friday night and then you see me the next month or the next night or whatever i'm always doing something different because it's how my brain works <laughs> is is there a um you know a a, a bit that you you latched onto that you're like all right i'm always gonna go like this style like like let's say your style is the storytelling style uh or do you want to change it up and say all right i want to try work in the crowd a little bit um yeah i'm pretty much i'm pretty true to my to my self right now with the like i said just telling stories from like day-to-day -day life i really haven't branched out and done a lot of crowd work and a lot of other stuff but um as i get more comfortable i'm sure that i'll, I'll branch out but not so much yet cool <laughs> And how about you, Joshua? You know, uh, how often do you get out there and do and do the work? Oh, not nearly as often as I like. Because I mean, we're, again, it's this conflict that I, you know I have this one side of my brain is serving the public, and the other part wants to serve my privates. I mean, that, that was, <laughs> that was <a> big... <laughs> but which part wants to serve the comedy? That's <laughs> So you, you'd be surprised. Yeah. Some people find the private's yeah. really funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm still, you know, it's, I've been in RN for like eight years, and I'm trying to find ways to balance everything out. You know, there are times when, you know, the work schedule is really hectic. It, I, I'm constantly, I mean, I, applying myself to the process of coming up with jokes and ideas and concepts, and I have this animated project that's hopefully will be launched in a month, and, you know, I keep myself busy. In terms of actually getting up there and do it, not nearly as much as I would like. So what I'm looking to do is find a good balance because you know when duty calls duty calls but um <laughs> why'd you point at me when you said that <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's her no, name no, now that's duty that's not what that's not what i had at all duty that's like calls. Like turd on the phone <laughs> i want to try and find i need to you know i want to find that balance because i mean i enjoy both but i mean this is a big passion for me so it's way of, like we you know fine tuning and applying so i mean once, you know, I can do open mics as often as I can. I mean, I do, I did a, um, I did a show here uh, a couple months ago and I placed third, which was fun. It was a stand-up contest. Oh, nice. Good. That was cool. So, I mean, I, I, I write and I play, you know, it's like I'm a little behind the scenes right now, but I mean, it's not going to be like that. It, I can tell by, by your, your, a lot of stuff you, that you showed us tonight that you are uh, a craftsman, uh, a wordsmith, or mm -hmm. more of a writer. Um, and, and is that something that, that, is more your comfort zone like you really love writing the jokes like a Seinfeld how he crafts the jokes out and every word matters or are you, you more like conversational where like Mandy seems to be more like just l letting it flow you know, she'll have a premise but it's she could say the same joke yeah. different probably she's every very, night yeah, yeah she's yeah. very good at that I'm, I'm still <clears throat> figuring it out you know because at times I feel like I'm just you know being dopey with jokes and just like one-liners and other times I'll tell a story you know that goes on for 30 45 seconds about something at work and I get good laughs so I, I, I think I try and mix it up you know if I'll go you know if, if nothing is working you know, I'll just go for broke and just like poke fun at myself at the current situation so I kind of I kind of do both so it's I mean it's fun no matter I mean I love the, again I love that rush I mean I like I'm like you know it's almost like a roller coaster is the best way to describe it because you, you got that thrill. Yeah. And you get off, you're like, woo, let's do it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And it's always different every night because you, you, you never know how to predict it. The audience is different. Uh, the, you know, the chemistry uh, of everything is just different every night. It could be a Friday night, you killed. Now it's Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the you know, 7 p.m. Sunday might not work as well or it could be your comfort zone. So it's, everything's always different. It's just a weird way to flow with it. I think these veteran guys you know have have done been there and done it all these different um situations and and you know you start to evolve into mm. you know that's a good way of putting it yeah yeah but speaking of all this joke writing stuff <laughs> it is now time for us to see your sets pretty soon we're going to give you guys um since we still have a lot of time we're going to give you guys 20 minutes each no, i'm just kidding <laughs> 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 I think you got everybody on that. I think you got everybody. <laughs> Even I was saying, like, oh, I think Josh just peed a little bit. No, it's it's three minutes is on the thing. But last week, uh, Bonnie, our, our first ever winner of the show, uh, wanted to go five minutes. So I'm going to give you guys a, a choice. Do you want to go three or five? Your best it's, three or best it's five? It's up to you. What do you think? I'm cool with three. All right, let's do that. All right, so That's we're going to go three minutes on the clock. Uh, you went last first, right? So it's it's yeah. you're, you're going to lead us off with your stand-up set. So this is 
um, going to be uh, uh, Josh Schaefer's mm -hmm. three-minute set. This is what you could see, folks, if you come out and see Josh live. Josh, uh, you have a Facebook. You want people to follow you and, and know where, where you're going to be? And, and if so, why don't you let everybody know? Um, actually, I don't have Facebook right now. I've been staying away because of the <laughs> politics, to tell you the truth. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm working on a website. So as soon as that is ready, featuring my material and stuff, it'll be out shortly. So I'll let, I'll let, I'll let you guys know. Excellent. All right. Well, this is Josh Schaefer. You catch him at a, a local club, a governor's club near you, whether it's a brokerage, McGuire's, or here at Governor's Comedy Club. We're going to now put the time on the clock. You're going to have two minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. You got it. <laughs> I appreciate you having my back. Um, your best three minutes. <laughs> Are you ready? I am. Let, let me introduce you. I think you. I am ready. Ladies and gentlemen, here he comes. <laughs> your EMT and RN who knows how to find the funny in the tragedy. <laughs> here he is, folks. Josh Schaefer, everybody. <laughs> Yay! Hi, everybody. That's Dr. Nick Riviera from The Simpsons. Sorry, I'm a bit of an impressionist. Uh, so I'd like to start off by doing a little bit of a, a – it's a nursing song parody from Bob Dylan. You guys asked about, you know, how nursing influences my life, so I'm going to do a little bit of a parody. Uh, I just want to let you know there's one lyric that talks about um, press gainy. Those are like satisfaction scores that we have to get good scores or we don't get paid by the state. So basically – I'll do a little uh, parody here for you. You ready? Come gather around, nurses, wherever you roam, and admit that that nasty aroma has grown, because you know who refused to make use of his throne. Now the whole family's complaining, so you better start wiping all your press gain he's blown. Mr. Klein, he needs a change. <laughs> nice. We're basically bedpans and beyond at the hospital setting. <laughs> What's really cool about uh, patients uh, is you learn about so many different religions and faiths, nationalities and beliefs. Everybody's always fighting though. So I figured, what's one thing every religion, every nationality, every denomination could could get along with? And it's pizza. Who doesn't love pizza? So I'm going to open up the first religiously based pizzeria. I have a motto for it. It says basically, your choice of topping and three types of cheeses could satisfy M Moses, Muhammad, or Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. I have a lovely fiance. We are engaged. <clears throat> that makes sense. She is Irish Catholic. She's my shiksa. Uh, but she's really laid back about me making these jokes. I can really push it with the religious jokes. And I said to her the other day, I said, do you think Jesus was the original cross trainer? And she didn't like uh, that, you know. Too, 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 too oh, <laughs> now as a Jew, I was circumcised. Um, <clears throat> How many of you, can, can I get a show of hands? How many of you are for, circum, uh, for circumcision? <laughs> All right, so the rest of you are for skin. <laughs> you know what I really love when I, when I meet patients as Native Americans because they have such noble heritage and their names are so cool. It's like, like I said before, Chief Sitting Bull or stands, stands with a Fist, all these powerful names. And I'm like, how come Jews don't have that kind of name? I mean, like, I'm Jew. What's my heritage? What's my name going to be like Josh Matzo Ball? <laughs> I mean, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I consider myself a reformed Jew, but then I think that's like, kind of like a bad connotation to it. Like, is it like a reformed alcoholic? Like, they always sit in a room with other Jews saying, Hi, my name is Josh, and I'm a Jew. It's been 30 days since my last bagel. Oh, my God. I'm also quite OCD myself, so that's how I get along with other patients, you know. But I'm so bad that like I even have to like count my farts. Fart, 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 fart. So my fiance, of course, calls me an obsessive repulsive. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I have seven minutes left. I'd like to thank you all for your time. <laughs> <laughs> Try the veal. Thank you very much. Time. Very good. Very, very good. good. Josh Schaefer, everybody. His website's coming out soon, so keep a lookout for him. Our judges are deliberating with their scores right now. Josh, how you feeling, bud? Feeling pretty good. It was fun. I like Mandy, so I'm not making this very competitive. I'm just here for the fun. It's all, it's, it's all it's about. It's about the fun. It's yeah. about the fun. All right, so we're going to start with Tony Walker Fresh. And uh, Tony Walker's... <laughs> <laughs> That's his hip-hop name. Uh, Tony... <laughs> There's nothing uh, fresh about me. Let me play. Uh, Tony, uh, what do you think about uh, his performance right there? Uh, well, I'm, I'm a little... Um, 
uh, not I, I don't know if bias is the right word. I'm because uh, I I'm a big fan of both of them because I I've known them both for a while. Um, and like I said, Josh has been on our show many times. Um, so I, I was so I'm already excited just going into this, and I loved some of his material there. I thought you know in the beginning the whole, the Jesus of the pizza and all that stuff. Uh, a lot of original, a ro- lot of original thought there. A lot of original stuff. Um, I like the Bob Dylan thing. Um, if you if you do impressions like you said, I'd like to see more of that. But uh, but I'm <laughs> I'm going with a ten. I'm going with a ten. Whoa, too nice. ten. Yep. Too nice. Excellent. All right, Darren. Me? Yes, sir. Um, first of all, you got a great singing voice. <laughs> you can sing. <laughs> Incorporate more of that. I love that. It's great. It's really good. I like that a lot. Um, the, the first joke I wrote, I don't remember the punchline, but it was good. I like that. First, you set it up real nice. Second joke, some of the the punch was real strong. Some of your setups are a little bit too long. You got to yeah. skim those down, get those down. But all your punches were really good. If you could shorten down those premises, it's going to be much tighter because the punches are great. Just get, weed out some. I know I'm wordy too, so it's, it, that's something that we all have to work on. Uh, the cross trainer joke, I really like that. That was great. Really yeah. good joke. Mm-hmm. Uh, did, what was the other one? Um, the matzo balls, eh, I'd pull it. You know, the other Jew joke, fucking good. The 12 <laughs> step, yeah. Go with that. Yeah. Keep going with that. I've never heard that before. I'm not saying it's never been done, but I've never heard that. I like that. That was really good stuff. And the OCD joke, I like too. The, the obsessive, uh, repulsive, very yes, good. The That's really the good. And you know what? I think you did a great job. I'm giving you a big fat eight. Oh, hey, mm-hmm. very good, very right. good. And a great critique, too, I might add. Very good. <laughs> honest. Yes, honest <laughs> and uh, very wit. Well, well, he ain't going to get better by me lying to him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I'm not going <laughs> to. Absolutely. Uh, Key Fitz. Well, I'm, a big, I'm a big fan of the, uh, the, um, the song that you did at the very mm-hmm. beginning, because I, I do that a lot in my set, too. Uh, so I have a tendency to bring back my musical roots, because <laughs> I used to be in bands before I did mu- uh, doing uh, comedy. Um, so I really like that. I like the fact that you nailed the Dylan voice very big, mm-hmm. very, very head on, I should say. You're holding it a um, <laughs> really what you were doing. I yeah. liked a lot of your jokes that you had in there. A couple of them were a little on the weaker side. Some of them, like Darren was mentioning, was because of the fact that they were a little too wordy. Uh, I really love the, res- uh, the obsessive repulsive joke. That was very good. Uh, I like the cross trainer joke. So... I'm going to give you a big fat eight also. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very good. All right. Well, I I think that was great stuff. How are you feeling about uh, your scores? Again, I'm fine with this. This is a learning experience. So I appreciate you guys giving all this feedback and stuff. You know, keep keep on my game and keep working (laughs) at it and keep doing, you know, keep doing appearances. So... And again, you know, not to plug too much, but this animated thing I have in development <laughs> involves comedians. So I'll be in touch with all of you about what you guys already know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but hopefully it will be promising because every episode features a different comedian. And it's animated. And everybody loves animation. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you're doing the animation yourself? No, no. I have an animator in LA who's doing it. It's not suitable for children. It's actually mm-hmm. quite cemented. But you guys can contact me privately if you like. And we'll talk. Right, I mean, cool. it's a long process. But cool. you're all welcome. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Very good. I'm excited about that. So give it one more time to Josh. And now it is Mandy Jones's turn. <laughs> Mandy, are you ready to rock and roll? I am. <laughs> All right, I will uh, introduce you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Deer Park, Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> Exit 53 of the LIE. <laughs> <laughs> of the LIE. <laughs> If you there's a gas station in town, she knows it. <laughs> <laughs> Here she is, folks, ladies and gentlemen, Mandy Jones. Woo! And you begin now. All right. So I went to the car dealership the other day, and I hand the guy my license, and he's like, "Ooh, organ donor." I go, "Not yet." Um, <laughs> I've decided I've gotten comfortable being in front of a crowd so that I'm going to I'm going to start doing beauty pageants. I think I'd be good. I think I could win. I'm going to ma- represent states like Miss Directed Anger <laughs> and Miss Communication, and Misdemeanor. <laughs> one time. Um, I think it's important to dream. I think it's important to have dreams. I dream of becoming a successful comedian and making big rooms of people laugh. And everyone I know, they dream of things like winning 
winning the lotto. And I think my dream's better because at least I don't have to wait till tomorrow to find out what a loser I am. <laughs> <laughs> I love music, um, but I'm really short. So there's all these concerts I've been to and I've never seen the band. But what I do love seeing is you see hot chicks posing for creepy guys with nice cameras. Because it's like, honey, that's not going in a magazine. Like, he's jerking off to that later. <laughs> Thanks. Um, we were going through Thanks. pictures recently. My dad holds up a picture of me. I'm like five years old. I've got my Easter dress and my Easter bunny. And my dad's like, oh, honey, I love this picture of you. You could see my truck and my Impala in the back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we didn't have a um, I didn't do anything traditional for my wedding I didn't have any friends or family there it was just me and my husband on the beach or the photographer and afterwards I sent my dad pictures and it's just you know me in my wedding dress and my uh, my husband in his tux and my dad goes yeah I'm really glad I didn't walk you down the aisle looks like a long walk in the fucking sand <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! We were. He was showing us around his bedroom recently because he had redone everything and like he painted the walls and he got new furniture. And then he crouches down specifically to show us the like pleather matted headboard. He's like, "Yeah, it's for when you're slamming the bitch's head against the back of the headboard." <laughs> I'm like, yeah, thanks, Dad. Perfectly normal conversation to have with yeah. your adult daughter and son-in-law, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, I'm married and um, I went to see a psychic recently and he tells me, you see problems before they happen. My husband goes, yeah, that's because you cause the problems. <laughs> 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 we, um, he's really good with his hands. I mean, he could like fix and build shit. Fucking perverts. <laughs> 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 and he works in construction and he's always saying that the older white guys are a little racist. So I said, well, what do you mean by that? He goes, well, they complain that Spanish guys use way too many nails with the nail gun. Like if a white guy were to go like do do do, a Spanish guy would use like 15 nails in that area. So I said they just like pulling the trigger. But I'm totally joking, guys. That's <laughs> fucked up. That's white and black people. A Spanish guy's gonna saw your head off, and that shit's not gonna have a motor. Um, my family is really big and apparently full of gamblers because for Christmas they don't even buy. Um, Christmas cards, they just buy stacks of scratch offs and then hand them out with no names. So my uncle won, and uh, my sister won on the one my uncle gave her. And he goes, um, I told him, and he goes, Oh, I'm sorry, tell her I meant to give that one to you. <laughs> 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 and time, very good. Mandy Jones, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Mandy Jones. So, Mandy, how are you feeling now after all four rounds? I feel good. Thanks. I had fun. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. Definitely hard. Definitely hard. But uh, it's a good challenge. Yeah, you did great. And now we will turn to our judges. We'll start off with Key Fitz. Key? I have one question before I uh, actually tell you anything. At the very end, you seemed a little lost. Did you lose your punchline there? Well, he was showing me the... Yeah, I know. That's why I, 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 I just wonder if that was what if was that, I, I was afraid that time had something to do with it and that I wasn't going to get the punchline in on the, the three-minute mark. Gotcha. Yeah. That's, okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, what I want to say is I, I loved your first joke. You, were, you started off very strong. I liked all the stuff about the family and everything else. The father joke I can actually relate to because I sold that to my daughter because of the fact I'm an old rock and roller. So, you know, the little pleather headboard, you know. So, <laughs> and so now she's, she's got all these weird pictures of me. Um, <laughs> in her head, not, not physical. Um, but, no, I really liked your set and uh, good job. Thanks. I give you an eight also. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> eight from <laughs> Keith Fitz. Tony. <clears throat> um, I loved it. I loved it. I I, I loved the delivery. Um, even the like the little, you know, one point she just said thanks, like just a little <laughs> stuff like that, just just cracked me up. Um, I love the self depreciating hum humor. Um, I I uh, I yeah, I just thought the Mexican thing I thought was hysterical. Um, <laughs> so again, I'm I'm doing a ten again. Thanks. Ten. There we go. Thanks. Ten again. Very good. Good job. <laughs> All right, Darren. Yes. Oh, um, time to get up. Great job. Great job, Mandy. First joke, right out of the gate. Fantastic. I love the self-deprecation. Again, you're so natural and conversational. I really enjoy that. I don't feel like I'm here watching you tell jokes, which is, I love that. It's just, that's so organic. Um, that Mexican joke is fucking superb. 
Thank and you. So, because it it hit me slowly, like, it's like pulling the trigger, just the way you delivered it. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, and then I was like, oh my god, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a racist gang joke. <laughs> that's fucking beautiful. I love that. That was fantastic. <laughs> good, good that's stuff. a racist gang. Oh, what's better than that? <laughs> I just love how much you love that's it. That's fantastic. Yeah. They do pull the trigger. I love it. That's, it's a smart joke. That's a smart joke. Mm -hmm. um, I. I loved it all. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a big fat nine. Thank you. Wow. Thank very you. good, folks. Well, the scores are all in. I'm going to tally up the scores. And while I'm doing the math, which might take me a, a half an hour, <laughs> um, we are going to, uh, everyone just, uh, the judges, give you plugs. So, Tony, tell everybody what you got going on, mm -hmm. where they can find Knock mm -hmm. Gotham Dead, um, mm -hmm. the, the radio show, and your, your uh, okay. live. The, uh, the Knock Dead radio, the Knock Dead <laughs> comedy radio good. show run every like Monday that. through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. right here on GovsRadio.com. Keep it locked at GovsRadio.com. We have a lot of great shows, including this one, including Mandy's. Um, and vote for us for the best of Long Island for uh, best radio station. Um, vote for Knock Dead comedy. We, you can see us... Um, this Saturday, we're at the Riverwalk in Riverhead, um, and that's actually our only public show. We have uh, other private gigs, but that's our only public show that I can think of off the top of my head. That's within the next few weeks. So, uh, Like us on Facebook, all that good stuff. Knock em Dead Comedy and Govs Radio. Very good. Yeah. Darren, Thank you, what do you got cooking? Uh, I'm going to have to buzz out of here in two minutes because mm -hmm. I'm going to be up on stage that's here. Yes. Yes. I'm going to be here um, in two weeks as well doing a benefit. Uh, just check my fan page. I'm all over the place. Uh, you can hear my podcast live, broadcast live on Facebook every Thursday at 8 o'clock with George Gallo. It's uh, undisclosed. And uh, that's it. Just uh, like me on Facebook, follow my fan page. And you got to get on Facebook. You got to get a fan page. Oh, yeah. Start it up. You need it. Okay. And that's it. We'll do. Thank you. But let me buzz out. I'll see you guys afterwards. You both were amazing. Really good jobs. I, I hate to go. Darren, but thank you so much for, you, for taking the time to be thank here. Thank you for having you me. Great I really judge. appreciate it. Yes. Darren you guys Dylan, are fantastic. Thank I'll see you. you guys after the show. Take thank care, you. man. And uh, Key, uh, let's get your scores real quick, and then we'll uh, your uh, plugs real quick, and then we will announce our uh, winner. Put his scores in. Okay. <laughs> Right now, I don't have any public uh, public shows at this point. Everything is private. But if you want to look for me, you can find me on Facebook under Key Fitz, K E Y F I T Z, as in zebra. You can find a lot about my shows on there. A lot about my uh, a lot about I like to steal a lot of memes and throw it up there too. So a lot of funny <laughs> stuff up on my Facebook. But uh, you can always you can always look for me or you know give me a shout out and I'll see if I if I'm doing anything in your area. Just I'll let you know for sure. Um, yeah, like I said, everything I get is all private booked right now, so unfortunately I don't have anything to plug. Well, catch Key Fitz. He'll be at a show near you uh, s sooner than later, hopefully, and, and go to his Facebook page. Uh, check him out. He is a funny, talented guy. He's a musician. He does it all. And, um, you know, he's been, been at it for a long, long time, and he's a staple here on Strong Island. <laughs> um, we do have our, our uh, scores tallied up and ready to go. Are you ready for this moment, Tony? Are you guys ready for this? We are. All right. This was a great competition. I just want to say you two were great. Um, very funny people. Uh, you, you've done it all. You did a joke writing challenge. Both of you with two great jokes, and I'm going to steal and use them tonight. <laughs> you, also <laughs> you also, the premise pressure, you both came through uh, in a very tough scenario when people throw premises at you, and you both fired back very fast. You went up against Key Fitz in the mm -hmm. Yo Mama Battle of the Ages. Mm -hmm. And and came out alive, <laughs> and then and you both showed us your stuff with a three minute set uh, in front of a, a very small audience, and that is not easy to do either. And I just want to say thank you to you both before I give the scores for coming out here and showing us that you can put up, shut up, and stand up. <laughs> See what I did there? And here we go now, <laughs> Josh. You had you had very good score. At 106, ladies and gentlemen, 106. Woo! Very good. But Mandy Jones is our champion tonight Whoa. with 113. Woo. Mandy Jones! Thank you. Mandy Thank you. Jones. The winner, the Three's Company girls are cleaning house these first two shows. Thank goodness there's only two of them, so the third show 
We <laughs> no, no, you girls are doing great. You're, you're funny. Catch Three's Company. You can see Mandy Jones on Three's Company with with our uh, Bonnie Scalisi and also Tony Lindorfi. Very funny trio. Uh, so make sure to catch their shows. Where you guys? Wednesdays? Wednesdays, 7.30, 8.30, Gavs Radio. Wednesdays, 7.30. So catch that, Mandy. Uh, you are our champion. Any any words? Uh, we would like a speech. Oh, well, I got to thank you. I got to start with God uh, for bringing us all here tonight. Um, thank you, Don. No, I had a really great time. Um, I had fun watching Bonnie uh, compete on the first round. I had a lot of fun tonight. Me and Josh, like Josh says, he's like, I like Mandy. I, you know, <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. You know, I like that you guys had key fits so I didn't have to talk about Josh's mom the whole time. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 no, we had a yeah, good time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't wait to see the other contestants. Excellent. <laughs> Very good. And, and uh, Josh, any final words from you, my friend? No, everything's all good. And like I said, you know, I got the Facebook <laughs> Facebook page going, <laughs> uh, just, despite my objections. Uh, but, you know, if it's all for it's all for gathering, you know, getting a you know, gathering and a following, it's fine. And everyone here is, you know, very talented. And I, you know. Thank you, God, for bringing us here tonight. That <laughs> no, was very good. I appreciate it. Good learning experience. I like. Well, that. I appreciate you guys for coming out. I appreciate our judges, our panel again. Tony Walker, thank you so much for, for uh, making it all happen. Tony thank produces the show. Tony, um, Sally, over and there Sally too. in there as well. Hi. Sally, Hi. thank you so much for engineering us tonight. Hi. Nancy Rizzuti in the house representing. Hi. Nancy always looking out for all of us uh, in this comedy community. Key Fitz, thank you again for coming out here and being thrown into this Yo Mama thing and, and pulling through with some big uh, big hits out there. So we appreciate you. And also, Darren Dillon, thank you for coming down and um, you know uh, during a night where you had to headline a show, show. So we appreciate Darren Dillon also. So that's our show for tonight. And I want to thank Mandy and Josh uh, for coming down. Of course, thanks to our judges. And what a blast it's been tonight. I wrote that down. <laughs> I knew ahead of time. <laughs> Uh, make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Put Up Shut Up and Stand Up. And also, if you're interested in being on the show, email us at Put Up Shut Up Stand Up at Gmail. Uh, and that will be all over our, our social. So um, make sure you drop us a line if you want to be on the show. Also, be sure to check out GovsRadio.com all week long, as there are a ton of great shows all week, including Knock 'em Dead Comedy Monday through Friday. 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And also on Wednesdays, we have Mandy's show, which is Three's Company with Mandy, Bonnie, and Tony Lindorfi. And Tony will be down as a judge in a couple of weeks, so we're looking forward to that as well. Also, make sure you come out to Governor's Comedy Club and support live comedy. It's very important, folks, that you get out of your living rooms and come see it live because there's no better way to see live, to see stand-up comedy than live and in person. And if you're lucky, then they'll do a meet and greet and you could actually meet them. <laughs> or buy their CD or their T-shirt or whatever. Um, I'm Don Sill, and on behalf of everyone here, I want to say thank you, good night, and always be funny. Yes. Woo! Thank you, everyone. Good stuff. Oh, that was good. Yeah.